Here's a quick overview of my shop layout. I'm not going to do any hammering or anything. I'm just going to show you. Start out with a 10 by 12 shed. And if you're, if you're patient, you scrounge around, you can really get a lot done and pretty cheap. These rocks I got out of a creek. Hauled in some gravel. Made a rock path around it. I found these barrels, somebody threw them away outside of a hotel. Uh, the wheelbarrow, I mowed an old lady's yard and she gave it to me. That's an old clay water meter pit. I filled with uh, my bigger coal, my coke. I had to get the slack tub, I had to buy it, couldn't find one. The stumps I cut from a pecan tree, really super hard wood. The anvil is a 200 pound Peter Wright from 1860. I got it for $100, which was a steal. Here, let me back up. You can kind of get the... A better view of my layout okay you don't have to have anything fancy a 10 by 12 shed if you don't fill it with lawn equipment it's a pretty decent little workshop and then a couple of cedar posts that we cut and set and a tin roof and it just about doubled my workspace I got so many good ideas from you guys on YouTube. You'll probably see some of your ideas mixed in here. Buddy of mine's a painter. He made that sign for me. Uh, my anvil. There's a workbench I made out of just rub oak. Just, uh, I made it tall enough that I could stand and work at it. Let me get out of the sun here. A lot of things I just scrounge and I find old wooden boxes and uh, you know, a socket set. This is full of nails. Um, my taps and dies. Um, I find things in the trash. This old toolbox here right now, it's got my hammers in it and my fire, my fire tender and things. Um, basic, my basic tools. Rough cut oak shelves. If you can see, the sun's glaring. Now, I got a Beverly shear. I'm not sure where I'm going to mount it yet because I need a good space, open space for it. Scrap. That's a World War II blacksmithing kit I came across. Uh, ammo boxes are awesome. They're everywhere. They're, most of them, the metal ones are waterproof. I keep my important tools and these waterproof ammo cans. I've got them all over the place. There. Uh, plus, uh, I like military stuff. I, after doing six years in the Marines, I kind of like that stuff. Uh, right now, here's my scrap that I keep in these old clay sewer pipes. This part is not under the roof, but I'm working on that. My fire pit. Here's a pipe threader from 1910. I got this at a I got this at a yard sale for 15 bucks. Focus. Okay. Pipe threader came with the tools and the dies. Cedar posts work great. 
you don't have to be pretty about it. I think the, the rougher it looks, it just looks like an old country workshop. I use rough cut oak, notched them out, and uh, this is the other part of that pecan tree. The other part of that pecan tree, um, that was on top, that stump. But I picked this section because it had a limb sticking off of it, and I wanted that thick shelf for my post vise. And uh, I cut it based on you know the height of my vise support. I hope you guys get some good ideas from this. Like I told you, I've got tons of ideas from you all on the internet. This is a piece of an old leather work belt. real handy you know it uh, just screw it to the wood I keep my it holds a chunk of beeswax holds my scrolling wrench it holds uh, my most my, my soap stones and my my pliers that I like to ha use the most so look use your imagination and, and save that stuff and uh, most of the fun of this hobby is finding things and setting up your workspace. You know, you could, if you had enough money, you could just go buy everything from an auction or an antique shop, but I don't think that's any fun. I got this blower from a guy. Actually, the blower and the post vise, they were laying out in his yard. I was helping him with the sewer backup. I tripped over that vise. It was covered in leaves. I said, hey, what is that? He goes, I said, hey, that's a leg vise. And uh, he said, yeah, it was my grandpa's. And I got a blower, too. So I traded him an old broke-down John Deere tractor for both of these. Now, this didn't have a handle. I just took a two-foot-long piece of square, three-eighths mild steel, welded a ball bearing on it, put a little twist in it. And... Uh, oiled up all the gears and works really good so it goes back to just being patient don't don't rush out on the internet and spend three hundred dollars for a blower look around I found this toolbox in the trash I put a rope handle on it uh, I keep my the tools that I need to access pretty quickly my wire brushes my coal rake um, it's real good. You know, you want to have it, want to have it handy. And uh, now, my forge. This is a culmination of hundreds of ideas I got off the internet. A little bit of my imagination, trial and error, mistakes. Here's the basics. I went to a, a heavy truck repair shop. They gave me a brake drum off of an international dump truck. A car brake drum to me just wasn't quite big enough. What I did was, you can't see it, underneath there is a brake drum from a car. It fit perfect in that hole. I actually had to hammer it into place. Bolted that sucker in. I used a cast iron floor drain that I can forge all day on this sucker. Works great. Let me warn you though, this one inch thick cast iron, it's gonna take you a while to cut this out. Oh man, it took me several lunch breaks to get that thing cut. Then, so I can't weld cast iron. Some of you can. So what I had to do was take square bar at the height that I wanted cut my supports where I wanted them, weld them to square plate, and drill through that cast iron to mount my three legs. Three legs is better, of course, because it's not going to be so tippy. Um, little decorative piece I cut off of a, uh, a fence, the oak leaves and acorns. I just I cut that off there just for a decorative look and made a little hood ornament for my forge. I made a tong rack. This tong rack, if you can see, 
and your tongs won't get hot. This was the end of a storm grate here in town that they were replacing. They pulled it out with a backhoe and they let me cut the end off of it because I thought, hey, you know, it looks like I could do something with that. I cut, cut a couple little pieces out of angle iron, cut the end off that storm grate, bent it, you could just about bend it by hand, bent it to the shape of my drum, drilled it and bolted it on there. And I can fit all the tongs I need on the side of that sucker. And there's so many little things you can do. And this is why I said it's so fun. You can, I had this hook, um, welded that hook on there. And this is where I hang my coal shovel. Um, I wish I could tell you how much money I have invested in this. It's not much more time I went to the local plumbing store and I had them thread me black iron pipe and uh, put a T on there and a toilet flange bolted to the car brake drum one of the harder things I had to come up with guys is this design here I put a cap on there but it kept rusting on there and I couldn't get it off so I put the cap on cut a slice off the end of it bent a piece of square bar welded it to it and I put a, a little piece of square tubing there notched it out drilled a hole through it with a cotter pin okay and you got um, a pretty decent ash dump set up here same ball bearing I used on my my forge handle this uh, there's a 135 pound, supposed to be a Japanese swords anvil. Um, it's got the rounded edge here and then the, the square edges here. Uh, I don't know what that is for sure, but anyway, that's the basics of my setup. And I hope you, I hope you get some kind of something you can use from this because. Uh, I've gotten so much, so many ideas. Here's the back of my shed where I got my hidden junk pile. That's my antique tractor, my 65 Cub Cadet that I'm working on also, my coal stockpile. Okay, just uh, have fun with it. And that's it. Doesn't have to be too fancy. So, thanks for watching.